They all called me a madman. They said it couldn't be done. And yet, here I am, having taken out every single Xenotype, every plant, every animal, every weapon, every apparel, every faction, every biome, and everything that makes vanilla Rimworld Rimworld stripped bare. And in its stead, everything from the depths of the workshop, mods that I do not frequently play, I have built Rimworld as designed by the community. And to top it all off, this will be a Generations playthrough. This was intended as a, as a research pack for the Generations 2 series, which is coming up very soon. But then I thought, how else am I gonna test Tribal and Industrial and Space or an Architect and Ultratech mods all in one playthrough other than doing another generation series. But of course, there were some things that you just simply cannot replace in base game room mod. Soil, for example, or take the machining table that is used in so many mods from across the workshop. There is a thin line between a visionary and a madman, and I'm not sure which side of that line I'm on. But what I do know to lead us through this glorious, brand new, like never before seen experience are our two tribal founders, Chuck Rock and Ungus Bungus. <laughs> along with their loyal seagull companion, Admiral Goujon. Now, this was originally a testbed mod pack for everything I wanted to try out for Generations 2 and a quick way to test it, so naturally, I have designed an entirely custom planet with custom factions. Why I do this to myself, I don't know. Every single faction, backstory, settlement name, style has all been customized from the ground up with the lore written throughout all of the ideology descriptions for every single one of the factions. But to sum up what's happening around here quickly, we are a medieval fantasy planet, a very stereotypical medieval fantasy planet with goblins and dwarfs and eastern empires and all those usual things but the twist is we have been settled by ultra tech factions looking to take over this being a generations playthrough we're going to go tech level to tech level one at a time and of course aging is significantly faster so we've actually got to build families and plan out cities and do all those things you kind of expect from generations playthrough so without further ado welcome at long last to what i think is very aptly called unrimworld a generation's experience. And of course, if you would like to play along, everything you'll need below, including load order, install guide, configs, etc, 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 will be down below. This time at the end of the episode, I'm also going to give uh, some little guides on how to customize things a bit further, because there's a lot going on with this. Maybe you want to make it your own a little bit more. So our colony founders are starting characters here. Ungus Bungus is strong of muscle and strong of other muscle as well. Chuck Rock called that because she chucks them out of the way to grow plants. I don't really know where I was going with that. Good plants, good medical, a little little bit of thinking, but of course we're, we're Neanderthals. We're people who've just come out of a cave. Not only do we have everything to research, we have actually nothing at all. Like, less than the usual starting research to kick things off. Let's take our time. Let's be slow about things. As slow as we can be with characters that age at, like, 18 times the speed of regular characters. We're just gonna take it slow, build some good characters, build some good dynasties, and more importantly, build a good base. And where are we going to build that base? Well, none other than this very, very fancy starting map. A little forest in the middle of an enormous valley. It does look like it's quite easy to defend, but there's a lot of exit points on this map. We can't just throw up a wall around the entrances and be done with it. What on earth am I supposed to do with Chuck and Ungus? I, I, I've got to get into my Neanderthal mindset. Better start leaving some YouTube comments. I don't even know where to begin. I removed as much base game stuff as I could. Obviously, there were certain things you couldn't, like walls. That are pretty important, you might have noticed. But as for things like production, or farming. I don't even know where to begin with that. I guess we'll slap down a growing zone and just go from there. Oh, let's build a structure. Let's try and build a little house for Chuck and Ungus. You know what? Right here. Right where you're stood. Right where you started. I'm going to put down a building. Wow, that is very Neanderthal. Let's do, <laughs> let's do something like that. We are Ungus Bungus cavemen here. Let's keep things simple. Doors? Far too futuristic. You can forget that. Oh, this is so weird not having any of the floors, even the modded floors I normally use. Uh, there, there are some ones that have added back things like wood floors, but it doesn't really suit my Ungus Bungus caveman lifestyle. Oh, and of course, I forgot to I forgot to mention the most important thing. They are lovers. Ungus Bungus and Chuck Rock are... Look at that. There's big lovers. And that means, I suppose, we need... Oh, no. There's no double beds. God damn it. Okay, double sleeping spot then for Ungus Bungus and Chuck Rock. Now, a personal challenge to me is to try and keep the Ungus Bungus Chuck Rock dynasty going from 
tribal era from caveman era all the way through to the end game if we can have their descendants still alive in the colony as far as i'm concerned that's a victory so what the hell is all this stuff then we've got iron we've got copper we've got some wood hanging around pemmican obviously would be kind of a bit silly to remove that because then we'd starve to death we could have probably got by steel so many mods use steel unfortunately that's something that couldn't be taken out maybe it's easier to see what we do have rather than what we don't have production okay fair enough we got a lot of stuff to work with here workbenches and primitive tools stuff like that Storage, very basic stuff, a pile of wood instead of your base game shelves. I'm all right with it. Ideology furniture, plant pots, that type of thing. Wowie. God, this is weird. None of the default floors is very strange. Obviously, you can't take away campfires. That would be, be very silly. Well, we would very quickly freeze to death. What is a conga or an ogalupe? I presume is how that's pronounced. Thinking spot. Oh my God, we've upgraded. The thinking bench. Very advanced people. We've got a lot of kitchen stuff there too. Very nice. Some decorations maybe to consider for the future. Basically everything we've got unlocked right now is stuff that just doesn't require research. And that's about it. Now we do have the hygiene mod, but all of its features are disabled. We're using it for water to power other stuff like machines. Not relevant for now. You don't have to worry about building Ongus Bungus and Chuck Rocker Toilet. We haven't invented that yet. How can I build square farms if I haven't invented geometry? There you go. <laughs> I could use the fertile soil, but I feel like they're a little bit a little, little bit too stupid for that. Oh, God, look at all this stuff. Whoa, hold on a second. I need to figure out what on earth we're going to grow. The only default uh, plant in game are berry bushes. That's it. Everything else is brand new. Oh, my God. Good God, I don't even know where to begin. What do we eat? We eat... We could just grow more berries. I think that would make sense. Kind of earliest agriculture being berry bushes might be... Might be quite sensible. You've already invented fire, Ungus Bungus. Let's go ahead and slap one of those down. Two, what is that? Two flints. Oh, God. How on earth do I get flint? Oh, no. Crafting spot? Mining spot? Digging spot? I, I suppose any of those. Digging spot we can slap down next to the river. That gives us... Ooh, clay and adobe bricks. Oh, that's good. Okay, that's something for the future then. Fair enough. Mining spots. I presume you have to put down on stone? Ooh, what on earth is this? Hello. All of the base game rock types have been removed. So we have shale. Shale, and what is that? Tungsten ore. What does that do then? We can mine coal and gather salt. A little bit too big brain for us right now. And then, of course, the crafting spot. I need to know where we get flint from. We've, we've got some to start off with, but I'd like to be able to get some more. Ooh. Nettle hemp. Dark timber. Oh, my God. I don't know what any of this is. Processed bamboo, fibers, weave cloth from myco thread. Flippers! Is that so we can so we can swim faster? Oh, that's a cool idea. Primitive stone cutting spot? I bet that's it. Uh, smash obsidian rocks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And that turns it into... Smashing rocks turns it into flint. Oh, cool. There you go. I suppose at this point, when we are simple unga bunga cavemen, there's nothing really much else to do than sit around and think, right? Because we've got all the food we could ever need just out here in nature. We haven't got to worry about self-defense because no one is going to come and attack us. I mean, what would be the point? Just to kill us horribly? It'd be very rude. <laughs> what the hell is even that? A human rug? Oh, you can't do that. Well, maybe you could. I mean, speaking of thinking hard... One of the things I wanted to do is whenever we go into a new era, so whenever we go from tribal to medieval, is I also want to reform the ideology around with it. And we should say no moving on from tribal to medieval until we're actually able to reform. And where the thinking comes in is I'm going to take whatever is suggested from the comments to, to add to our ideology and, of course, to develop our society with. I think we've got to pick stuff, though, that's been relevant so far. If we accidentally find ourselves doing well with, say, fishing or melee, maybe that becomes one of the precepts. Maybe Ungus has a breakdown and starts hawfing all the berries, gets a sweet tooth. We add that in as a meme. Maybe one of our people gets horribly injured early on and we focus on healthcare from here on out. I'm not sure, but we're just going to let it develop naturally. This is what I am going to overrule, though. Uh, Admiral Goujon needs a house of his own. So I'm going to make him the most premium seagull uh, hutch. Where do seagulls live? Cage? Ooh! Admiral Goujon! Oh, you son of a bitch. Uh, do we have a weapon, though? Oh, you shitbag. My goddamn seagull. He was going to be such an important character. The only thing we've got is wood. The only thing we've got is wood. Run! Admiral Goujon is dead. We've only just bloody started. Ugh, Ongus brain think things. Is this why Ongus invents the first ever weapon? Maybe we just make a big stick for whacking people with. Oh, it actually says there you can whack people with it. Ah, oh, single brain cell. I like it. Oh, God, it's so sad. Oh, their beloved companion that they bought with them out of the cave, and this is how it ends. 
we're gonna i feel like a sarcophagus is a little bit inappropriate for this era maybe eventually we go down that route of course comedic stuff can be can be in the neolithic research i guess we'll dig it a grave give it a sky burial Ooh, <laughs> that'd be very appropriate sadly for ungus bungus though he, he is a caveman he's not that good at crafting things besides that the very basic stuff here come on whittle a stick down just in case we're attacked by that dire wolf ourselves we should probably be happy that admiral gujon was there to take the fall jesus i have no idea what half this stuff is i mean i know what a boomerang is and i can infer what a sharpened stick is i don't know what a rabbit stick is though thrown through the air Ooh, hello let's sharpen a stick instead and let's have a rabbit stick and you can keep both on you oh good <laughs> we're doomed no direwolf is gonna fear ungus bungus and his awful sharp stick actually you know what no 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 let's give the boomerang to chuck rock given that her name is chuck rock really i should just give her a handful of rocks make throwing rocks it could not be any more perfect now some mods don't have research associated with them right something adds an executive office desk here i have a very cool mod that lets us just simply hide it and i think that makes perfect sense because we are you know we're ungus bungus we're, we're cavemen and if you want to show them again you just click unhide so maybe when it's more appropriate we can bring them back but for the time being ungus bungus doesn't need an executive desk Ungus Bungus needs some basic furniture first, I think. Let's build Dirty Hole for Ungus, where Ungus keep Ungus things. Fungal Weevils join. What the hell are you saying? Hello? Oh my god. What are, what are those? Oh, they're bugs with mushrooms growing on them. Amazing. Ungus. Friend. I think normally I'd probably say, no, I'm okay. I don't really want the, the fungus insects. But this time around... This time around, we got to take everything we can get, right? Maybe this is a big defining moment for Ungus and Bungus and... What's their name? Chalk Rock? I mean, I didn't have Insect Herding Caveman on my bingo card, but this is pretty good. It's, it's unique. I can't deny it. But I have to make sure this is historically accurate, okay? I googled when was the first domesticated animal. Wikipedia says that the dog was the first domesticated species well before cultivation. Well, telling me we had Woofy Friend before we had, like like potato this is totally allowed we can definitely have bug friends i mean that wasn't on wikipedia but <laughs> you have to suspend disbelief a little bit okay they had a pet seagull what is that you've been working on chuck fenche i think you've just invented some sort of some sort of animal container so that we can domesticate these beetles oh, maybe we should do that faster though before they run off we've got a visitor are they trustworthy oh no <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard life out here. Okay, seagull, human, you're all treated evenly. Oh, she's actually going to get ripped apart then, eh? What are you talking about? Why oh, didn't kill her? What is that? I've got some sort of, some sort of strange edible crop. Were you a missionary or something? Well, you know, that's life, isn't it? It's a hard life out here. Oh my God, Chuck is pregnant already. Hello there. How long, how long do pregnancies take? Because, I mean, if people are aging, like, 12 times as fast, that means you're going to be pregnant for, like, six years. You goddamn wolf. You just can't be satisfied, can you? Seagull, then our visitor, now Ungus. I don't think we're going to be able to run that fast that quickly. Uh, stand your ground? Or maybe run away. Oh, God, that's a quick wolf. Oh, that's a quick wolf. Run, 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 run. I think the two of them could probably take it. Hey, stand your ground. Come on, get it, you damn wolf. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And stab. Oh! What do you mean, Dire Wolf Revenge? It started it. Oh, my God. I think I think Ungus just got bit in both of the eyes. No. He random, his eyes randomly just went white. That was frightening. I think we're doing fine. You cut its tail off. I don't know how you quite managed that with a sharpened stick. Oh, shit. Well done. Good work, Ungus. Uh, he is going to die in 13 hours, though. Tend Ungus. Hook up with Ungus. Execute Ungus. We, we have no medicine to speak of then, eh? Oh, I'm just going to have to use a good old-fashioned herbal tincture or something. By which I mean rub some mud in it and hope for the best. <laughs> He's going to die of an infection, isn't he? God damn, 41%, 53%, look at it go. 15% on the last one. Oh, God. I mean, I can't amputate a torso as far as I know. I think even if we did a lot of research, we wouldn't be able to figure that one out. Uh, quality, 41%. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Who wants to volunteer to go handle some boogs? It would be Chuck Rock herself. Hey, go go get those fungal weevils. Did they actually do anything for us? Am I about to waste a whole bunch of grass on weevils? Can we, like, trim the mushrooms? They lay eggs. I, I mean, all bugs do that, as far as I understand. Oh, they actually really don't do anything, huh? Oh, yeah, it's, it's legitimately just a bug that grows mushrooms on its back. We could eat the eggs. That sounds horrible. Oh my god, of course there's no bloody heal root, you idiot. You took out all the base game stuff from the game. That was the whole point. 
<laughs> um, maybe we can we can invent medicine quickly. Remember, no squares. We haven't invented geometry yet. Oh, I missed a spot. That's okay. Um, which of these? Ah, shit. Careful. Which of these give some sort of heal truffles? Hey, that'll probably do it. Oh my god, look at this. We're good. What are you? You can be harvested for fungal medicine. We've got heal truffles heal root, which I presume would be regular herbal medicine. And then we've got gold heal root, and then gild gilded bloom. Uh, can be processed into an elixir for healing properties. Oh, that's cool. Um, let's go for I guess the heal root ferns, right? The others are mushrooms and might die in the might die in the the, the light. I'll be completely honest, this wasn't at all what I was expecting. Seem to have dodged the infection from some sort of miracle. This might be a good excuse to invent flaws. Let me just slap down some Oh god, let me slap down anything at all. Rustic plank floors, that makes some sense. Oh, hello there, we got a trader. We've got, uh, what are you, Sata? We've got Thorns. I've, I've, I've had this mod previously, but I never did anything with it. Oh, this is cool. Um, which one of you is good at social? Are either of you good at social? Chuck Rock, we can at least say hello. We are about to invent commerce, or at least they're gonna teach us how it works. They have herbal medicine. Oh, that could be good. I'm gonna buy, uh, I, I think probably all of it. Oh, they've also got a little bit of flint. So let's buy some of that until I figure out, or maybe we figure out how to actually get that. And you know what, I'll buy some pemmican too. Good deal. They want all of these strange shiny rocks in exchange for stuff that we really need. Oh, I see it's in his dirty pit. Oh, and we've also got that magic banner that that person bought over here. Oh, I, I mean, look, I think if, uh, if, if some cavemen saw some huge steel pike you know we've got to start worshipping this, right? Thank you, kind visitors. You won't be forgotten. Ongus will remember this. Ooh, hello. Since it looks like you'll be here for a while, I certainly hope so. Chuck thinks you should give your faction a name. Uh, right now, let's keep it simple and stupid. And maybe we change the name each generation. Because, I mean, that would make sense, right? You wouldn't just keep a medieval name for the rest of time. What is this, the UK? What would be cool is it naturally evolving, though. So maybe we originally call it Ungus Bungus, and then in the medieval time, we call it Ungus Bungerton. And then in the the, the industrial era, Ungus bung, 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 Bungus Tunville. <laughs> You see what I mean, though? You just need something a bit more creative than that, because that's absolutely atrocious. Um, I'm open to suggestions. As always, I take the, the, the settlement suggestions from the comments, so throw them at me, but try and keep it something that we can evolve as our faction evolves, because I think that'd be kind of fun. For the time being, I'm just going to randomize it. Alum and Banst, and then we'll rename it tomorrow. Oh my god, the animals just can't stay away. A rox has become tame. It is known as Rox1. Oh, that looks cool. I don't know what a rox is, but that's amazing. Huge herding herbivore of unknown origins. Whoa. Rocks can be used as pack animals or trained to carry out the most complex of tasks. Oh, so they're advanced trainability. Oh, I mean, if ever we're going to invent some sort of animal husbandry, this seems like a pretty good idea. Not like animal husbandry in the furry sense. I mean, in like the, the farming sense. Oh, <gasps> we have giddy up. Oh, music to my ears. Ungus Bungus. Tamer of rocks. Yes! Oh my god, Ungus, you've already come so far. Look at my sweet precious boy. He's got his army of mushroom bugs. We've got this... Oh my god, and Chuck just asked Ungus to marry her. We've invented marriage. Now her name's gonna be Chuck Bungus. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's given me a headache. Oh, Chuck Bungus is so good. It sounds like a 70s radio DJ. What are you doing? He's taking the rocks out for a spin. Oh, he's taking it all the way to the bread. Man, this is cool. I'm already such a big fan of you could take the bread home with you. No? He hasn't look, he hasn't invented kind of lateral thinking yet. You're gonna have to give him a break. Ungus bring bread home. Ungus not have to travel to bread. Uh, uh, baby steps, okay? I mean, he didn't really invent riding on animals. The animals just kind of kind of told him how to do it. Oh, God, what is that rocks doing? Get out of here, you creep. I'll cook some tasty food as soon as possible, gummy bear. You, What do you mean, gummy bear? <laughs> Poor sweet Ungus is like, what the fuck is a gummy bear? I think Chuck just invented Haribo a few thousand years early. I mean, it's 5,500, okay? Maybe they'd just forgotten about Haribo in the first place. Um, That's not actually not a bad call at all. Let's slap down somewhere to actually do a little cooking. And I think the Camp Cauldron's pretty good. We need steel ingots, but I don't think we've got any at this point, do we? Uh, steel 
ingots. Oh, there was some on the map. Steel, of course, one of those base game remote things that you can't really remove, but these are ingots, as in we have to mine iron, we have to smelt it with coal. The dreaded Rimworld coal. Bungus, bungus. Oh, God, rocks. What are you doing? Get off the cauldron, you moron. Trainability advanced. My man just threw himself into the cooking pot the second we built it. Hello. Burn apparel, burn weapon, burn drugs, make baby food. That's obviously relevant. Detox meals. Uh, that's for getting rid of... Oh, that's cool. Oh, you can get rid of toxic buildup with with some types of meals. Oh, interesting. Okay. Dry frost leaf into hay. Oh, God, there's so much hard tack. I guess it's kind of a, an early version of package survivor meals, that type of thing. Cook, simple meal, times four with what appears to be a handful of five maggots. Uh, six maggots. Delicious. Sorry. Forgot that you need six maggots, of course. Ungus has renamed Sharpened Stick to the Frog. Oh, my God. I think you've just accidentally made the first ever relic of this colony. We're going to have to keep this thing in uh, forever. Pass it down generation to generation. Take it all the way through to Ultra Tech. Chuck has renamed Rabbit Stick to Terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? I don't even know what terrorism is. We haven't invented that yet. Oh, that's amazing. I suppose there's no limit on what you can name your weapons. Then you just you just go butt wild with it. Incredible. Ooh, and the storyteller has changed to Liara Livid. Increases the frequency of raids, traders, and quests. Because of course, I've taken out everything base game. RimWorld, we have no Randy Random, no Phoebe Chillax, no Cassandra Classic. Just a whole bunch of strange and spooky storytellers. I can't keep looking at him there. I, I, we're, we're just gonna have to invent burials. We're just gonna have to invent burials. I think my poor boy deserves something rather than just lying there rotting away. Ah, uh, Ungus. Oh, God, his poor brain. It can't handle trying to bury the seagull. <laughs> bury the seagull. What's wrong with you, you weird man? He just, he just can't figure it out. Ooh, his brain, his brain finally kicked in. He has invented burials. This is amazing. And to think, all of this stuff is, is hidden research in the base game. You just have to have some imagination. What are they doing? I had to sleep on the ground like an animal. I hope you won't let that happen again, dream ship. She is so goddamn cheesy. Cheesy Chuck and Ungus Bungus. They're out on a date, but she does have terrorism equipped. <laughs> Ooh. Chuck spread a rumor to Ungus. What the hell kind of rumors have you got? It's two of you in a field. He's whispering about Rocks 1 behind its back. Honestly, I I'm just going to let him cook. I, I could rename this animal, sure, but I could just let them do it, seeing as they're... Clearly so inspired. Oh, I made the cursor a stick because we're Neolithic. And then as the generations go by, we'll change the UI, we'll change the cursor. Uh, the problem is, that is a tiny little cursor and I can barely keep track of the bloody thing. Goodbye, Admiral Gujon. You won't be forgotten. Because of you, Ungus was able to form a bond with other larger, mightier animals. I mean, we have a goal. We have a goal that the colonists have set for themselves. Uh, I'm going to put this as a whole new category on the checklist. Invent bed. It's very simple stuff. I mean, she's going to have to invent the bed. She's the one that's worried about it. Ungus can be the muscle and actually build it in the first place. Let's slap down a thinking spot, I suppose. Eventually, we'll be able to get that tablet, but we need to get stone cutting or at least some way to get stone a little bit better. Oh my god, it's 37 degrees C here. Ungus Bungus, it's time to invent a door and actually maybe cooling. Maybe we're jumping a little bit fast into that, but I feel like they're going to... I feel like they're gonna bake otherwise. Let's get rid of this bloody campfire. Got no way to keep cool until we invent it. My friends, it's time to do a little bit of thinking. Primitive stone cutting eventually leads to stone cutting, gets us a better thinking spot. Maybe eventually can lead to things like writing. Chuck has a passion for it, but they're both similar skills right now, so they can, it can be a nice couples bonding exercise. Sweep the floor, do a little thinking. Try and figure it out between you. Oh no, all this thinking has given them a horrible headache. Or at least it's given Ungus a horrible headache. Is there any way we can light this place up without also heating up to the point they die horribly? I don't think so, sadly. Oh, hello there. A gift from our fungal weevils. Well, I mean, gift depending on your definition of gift. Delicious mushroom bug eggs. 
Absolutely disgusting, but I mean, it is something to eat, right? Oh, would you look at that? This is a, this is a nice occasion. The first ever colony meals. And yes, it is just 26 berries cooked up. Baby steps, baby steps, okay? Eventually, nice. Eventually, we're going to cook ourselves some very fancy gourmet meals. Not today, and not in this mod pack, so I'm not using vanilla cooking expanded. And if we've invented meals, there is, of course, one thing that we have to... Are they really not that bothered? Oh my god, they're not that bothered. And more importantly, they're actually happy that they ate a meal made with fruit. I was going to say that we have to invent the most important thing of all, a table. But they're not actually that bothered by it. And to be fair, I suppose if you're a caveman, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know the wonders of the table until you've had it the first time. Do not, my friends, become addicted to table. Very mod idea right there. Addicted to table. I might just build them one anyway. I mean, look, they're not going to be fancy, okay? It's just going to be... It's just going to be log. Ungus, take log. Ungus, sit on log. Ungus, place thing on log. Ungus, eat with table. Oh my god, look at this. This is the future. Write this down. The first ever breakfast in history ate at a table. I mean, the, the twist this time, of course, is we're the, we're the least advanced faction. Everyone else is a genius. We're the idiots. Oh, I planned to build a bed for you, honey, but I got distracted. It won't happen again. I'm so sorry. Look, that, that's, that's got to be our highest priority, right? Finish off the whatever it was we were doing invent basic cutting then we can think better with a better sleeping spot with a better with a better research spot oh god i've got beds on the mind oh my god it's not actually a research bench it's a tablet that we put on the floor next to it are we inventing writing and without further ado the first breakthrough of ungus bungus and chuck rock primitive stone cutting show me bed just show me bed we just need some sort of some sort of bed passive cooler though i will bloody take oh my god that's useful Passive cooler or basic cooking? God damn, these are all good research. I could turn a man into a rug. I think we've got to take the passive cooler, right? I think we've got to take it. It's so bloody warm. That's something they have complained about. They did pop up very briefly saying, oh, my clothes are keeping me cool. But if only there was a way. I feel like it's a big step up though, right? Putting a log on the floor and sitting on it and calling a chair seems, a uh, seems quite detached from inventing passive coolers. I wouldn't even know how to do that in real life. They're so wholesome, aren't they? They are so wholesome. All of this is going to be absolutely crushed after our first raid. And you know what? Maybe the truth is one day, maybe sooner rather than later, one of them will be horribly murdered. But that's the important part of life, right? That's the important part of generations. And I think most importantly of all, I should thank you all for joining me today. Any feedback, any suggestions, of course, uh, future things for the colony, ways to reform the ideology, names for the settlement, all of that and more. Please throw them at me and I'll try and incorporate as many ideas as possible. Got all the generations to ideas I'm still working through, hence why there's a little delay there. And there won't be an episode tomorrow because I'm at a birthday party. That's right, I am seven years old. It's an important birthday party, so I can't miss this one. Thank you, of course, as always, for, for joining me. Don't forget to stay tuned after the credits when there will be a little bit of information on how you can customize the world for yourself if that's something that you want to do and make it kind of feel a bit more your own rather than something I've set up ahead of time. Thank you, of course, to the executive producer patrons for allowing me all the time in the world to uh, work on all of this stuff that I'm working on. Thank you to Drew.com. Alex Warren, Brian, Nightshade Vixen, Drusus, Tarsus, Magnus, Optimus, Maximus, John Stoddard, Irish Bartender, Ember the Cobalt, Spintex, Jakey Fish, Vengeant, Tiny Magnus, Vionia, Ghosty, Zero's Legion, Knight of Sorin, Lee Zero, Hoaxor, Phasimus, Chase, Lucrative, Super, Cucumber, Sam, Biv, and Mr. Scratch for their support today at the Executive Producer Tears over on Patreon. I would wish to be... Uh, working with Ungus Bungus and you all together in my own primitive colony when the eventual apocalypse comes and all of our technology is rendered useless and all of the skills we've learned throughout our lives will be moot. Thank you. Thank you as <laughs> thank you as well to Wolfie, Orgthal, Stephen Collars, Nylanthria, Ugami, J520,000, Nikki in Wonderland, Raptor Mother, Carnal Grained, El Chalupa Cabra, Schmegels, Ed, formerly the Koopa Kunga, Joe Herman Hogholt, Dilzo, Black Frame, Status Number One, Green King, Trash Panda, Paladin, and Thormesh as well. So you want to customize things for yourself? Are you not happy with what I've done for you? That's okay. I understand. Let me show you a few things and a few tricks that I've picked up over my years of rim rimming. Everything from making your own custom characters to starting a whole new map to even adjusting the world itself if you want to. 
First things first, I always play with character editor. The reason that I keep this enabled during a playthrough is so that I can fully rename my characters, you know, for, for the patron names and things like that that come in. It's also kind of useful for tracking down bugs as well, because you can have a look at things out there in the world, and that can sometimes cause things to break. If you want to make your own characters, very simply, you could either adjust the people that I've got right now. You could make whole new characters by pressing the plus button or adding uh, specifically new different types of pawns and stuff like that. Uh, and then obviously going from there, just customize it the way you would anyone else. And then you can remove people. So get rid of Chuck and Ungus if you're a monster. And now you're playing with good old Alfred Flapjack Weiss if you want to. Don't forget to uh, actually spawn him in though with that button right there. So let's say you've got Alfred Flapjack Weiss, but you don't really like this starting map. Maybe this type of valley isn't for you. Maybe you just want a bit more of a standard map. Well, up in the top right hand corner, we've got map reroll where you can, funnily enough, just reroll the map. This will generate a map based on kind of base game room world maps, gener uh, basic generation there without any changes. But if you do want to customize the map entirely, go into mod options and pop open uh, map designer. And that will let you, funnily enough, basically design the map. You can go through every different thing. You can change the size of the mountain, so almost solid. You can change the size of the mountains to be huge. Maybe they're very rough. Maybe you have them centralized or something like that. And then when you change those settings and go to the map reroll, when you reroll it this time, look at that. Suddenly there's an enormous mountain surrounding the entire base. And again, play around with those settings because there's lots of different... Uh, of course, you don't need to just change the mountains. You can make it so the water's really high and play on like islands and stuff like that. Sorry, let me go to the actual right mod here. You can load some of the presets just to play around with. So there's like uh, Fishing Village, for example, is a pretty cool one. So if we go ahead and reroll that now... You see, you've got lots of lakes and things like that hanging around and lots of kind of fertile ground and stuff like that. Have a play around with it, see what you want. And when you've decided on the one you want, you just click it and then you click generate this map and it will change everything over to that one. Now, let's say you want to change the world itself. This thing is a little more complicated. It's something you'll just have to get a lot of practice with. You can open up a mod called uh, World Edit similar to your uh, Minecraft world that it enable it by clicking the enable button and what that will do is when you press these hotkeys on the overworld it will let you do whatever that says so say for example settlements editor is f6 so we go to the world and if we click somewhere and hit f6 it'll open up your settlement editor so this will let you not only look at the settlements already out there change the factions the names or whatever you can add new settlements you can set that to a specific faction so i don't know i want to give a faction to uh the eastern dynasty there you go and i want to spawn it right there and i want to name that big stinky bungus and then you save your changes and suddenly eastern dynasty has the big stinky bungus faction right there and you can do a lot with world edit you know, this is something that you're really going to have to, something more than just two minutes at the end of an episode can really sum up, but it's got everything you can want. Tile editor, so you can change, say, a forest tile to a desert tile. You can change the rivers and the roads. The roads are a little bit finicky, but you can connect up settlements. I use that in the uh, RPG mod pack. The world edit feature uh, lets you change funnily enough world features things like mountains and seas and stuff like that um the, the, more specifically it's the labels i should say on the mountains and seas so i've used that in this one as you can see to put down um labels so like this says the off world as this one's got the deserts and the the isles you create a new world feature you click where you want that to spawn in doesn't always work it's a little bit finicky and then you call that i don't know let's call it i don't know but bungus how about bungus again you save that boom you got a label saying bungus on the world map very straightforward stuff again just play around with it see what you can do make sure you save often though with this because you might accidentally do something game breaking with this is it's a little bit dangerous here and there but you'll get used to it and then just simply tick that when you're done to disable it again very straightforward stuff if you want to edit any of the factions or even spawn in new factions i'll show you a couple of tools for that so the first one is uh faction control this lets you modify all the factions going from faction leader name faction name the the color and the faction type so you can adjust the the, the type of faction it is say for example you want the edo shogunate you can click that it'll swap it to that one you can change the ideology create that from uh scratch change all of the faction relations much like i've done here to set up the story a little bit more and the, the kind of law that no one's got to read that i decided to spend two hours on regardless you can change all of that stuff uh and again if you just want to spawn in factions a little more simply the vanilla expanded framework 
will allow you to add any of the missing factions not currently in the save. If it has red text, generally you just want to ignore it, so say do nothing. Uh, but certain factions, like for example Civil Outlander Union, I haven't spawned that in, but you can add that yourself if you want. That's just kind of a base game generic industrial faction. You know what the Rough Outlander Union is and stuff like that. Gentle Tribe, Fierce Tribe, Hostile Tribe, Pirate Gangs, Shattered Empire, if you really like playing royalty stuff. Feel free to add them back in. You just say add a faction with settlements. You say spawn in, I don't know, six settlements that are a decent distance, but not too far away. And sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. I believe I've actually straight up disabled that in Cherry Picker. So that's not a... Oh, it did actually work though. Hey, look at that. Um, let's quickly skip over all these others. And then somewhere out there in the world, there you go. Look at that. You've got the Broken Empire hanging around in the world. So again, be patient with it. There's lots of different mods working together. And, you know, these are all free mods made by very talented individuals. So be patient with it. Don't get angry at modders or anything like that. Just take your time. Save often and do a little customization. You can basically make whatever you like out of this. Much as I have. And there you go. you got a whole new map with your new character, Alfred Flapjack. So take your time with it. Be patient and be prepared for lots of things to go wrong. Overall, have some fun with it. And... Take your time.